All right, I've had it. We're gonna lose our jobs. Developers are losing their jobs. Let's go back to farming. Let's go back to carpenting. Let's go back to whatever we were doing in the medieval days. This is what is the sentiment of a lot of people in the world today. And that is because Cognition Labs has introduced this AI software developer called Devin, which has done a lot of things that seem to be promising to a lot of people. But I'm going to talk about that later. Let's first have a look on what this guy showed. Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example of Devin in action. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple of different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. Sorry, I'm gonna just make it fast because I can't, yeah, I don't know, I can't, I can't. So let's do it. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. After that, it builds a whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line, its own code editor, and even its own browser. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. Okay, so one of the things that you would immediately notice is that this is way different from what we usually see in AI today. So we talk about Gemini, we talk about ChatGPT. They are merely tools where developers like us we go there, we prompt something, we get the output, and that's pretty much it. It's a human actually trying to ask an AI to do something. Here, you see the AI doing everything that is working on the code editor, you know, trying to run the code, and then if there are errors, sort of reading those errors itself, and then trying to make sense of, okay, what it needs to do. Should it go to the browser and, you know, try to look at the documentation? Or should it put breakpoints or change the code to, for example, produce more logs so it can see more errors and whatnot. The reality here is that to me, who is a software engineer with 10 years of experience and you know, pretty much into the market and obviously has a lot of confidence on the skill set, okay. I can see that this can solve some problems, but it cannot be relied on to a huge extent. But let's continue. Here, Devin runs into an unexpected error. Devin actually decides to add a debugging print statement, reruns the code with the debugging print statement, and then uses the error in the logs to figure out how to fix the bug. Finally, Devin decides to build and deploy a website with full styling as the visualization. You can see the website here. All of this is possible today because of the advancements that we've made in both reasoning and long-term planning. It's a really hard problem and we've only just started, but we're super excited about the progress that we've made so far. All right, so so as you saw, it tried something, it looked at the errors, it tried to then figure out the solution using the documentation, updating the code, even sometimes looking at the difference in the code that it has done. And when you see this chart, it really seems overwhelming because when you compare it, for example, with this is ChatGPT 3.5, this is ChatGPT 4, then we have Claudi, we have SWE Llama. So there are a lot of benchmarks that, that you can see. And this seems like a huge leap. But still, if you see the numbers, it's 13.86%. That means that of all the problems that were given to it, it could solve 13.86% or it's capable of doing that so far, which means that the rest of the percentage that you have, which is about 87% or 86% for that matter, it can't do it, which means that there needs to be someone that is going to guardrail the output that this AI software engineer is creating and then has to do something. So you can imagine this software developer as a really enthusiastic junior software developer, but it can't be relied on at the moment. It might improve in the future. That's a completely different story, but that's not something I want to talk about. I want to talk about something different as well. All right, one of the things that this video doesn't really tell, but they have mentioned in uh, several places is that it was able to complete real jobs on Upwork. And this is where I want to talk about a bit. When we talk about Upwork jobs, it's not that simple. I've worked on Upwork as a freelancer for a long time in the past. And first of all, getting a job on Upwork is really, really tough. So I'm really skeptical on what kind of jobs 
were assigned to this AI software engineer who created those jobs? What was the company behind that? Or, you know, was it just a fluke? What happened there? Because first of all, in order to just get a job on Upwork, you need to be reasoning quite a lot. There's a lot of back and forth communication that goes within, you know, Upwork and sort of understanding what the client wants from you and then basically giving them the output or convincing them that yes, you are the right person to do the job. You understand what they want. Because it's funny that we humans, we often see ourselves wanting to build something that we are not even sure about what we want. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the that is the biggest challenge when we are working in the software industry we are working on features that we are not really sure about we have all these methodologies like agile we have you know um uh, pi increments we have you know safe methods we have so many scaled agile there's so many variations because we are really uncertain on what we want to do and that requires human processing the understanding of the context the all the possibilities that could come out of it you know balancing this versus that so i am really skeptical about first of all the upward thingy because how did it get those projects that's the first thing and then how difficult were they because there are a lot of things that we are not really taking care of uh, and if we go to try and and you know map all these things out you're going to find a lot of variables that are missing for example if we talk about the upward thing what was the difficulty of the project how many projects did the ai apply to that's another thing we also can look into who created those projects because in order for looking at a software developer's success on upwork you are really to see the skill set that the ai contains and then also you know what was the output how efficient was the software developer in general there's so many things that we don't really know about what this can or cannot do because when you see a pitch from a startup you always see what obviously the vcs or the investors want to show the world right this is amazing or you know this can solve a lot of problems and this might replace a lot of developers that's what is sort of the narrative because that's what makes it viral i personally don't think that's the case and what i really like for example as comparison i would probably talk about sora which is the uh, sort of video version of chat gpt and it can create a lot of videos but where we see a lot of good videos that what Sora can do. For example, these videos in which you can see, you know, different versions of the realistic videos that Sora can create. You can also see where this actually fails. For example, here, this is completely wrong on what the prompt was supposed to do because this physically is not possible that you have a treadmill that sort of works backwards. Similarly, you will see things like, you know, puppies being generated randomly right here out of nowhere these are the things that sora when they or open ai when they publish their research they basically mentioned this or made it clear i'm really in the dark about what this cannot do and where there is this is lacking right now and that information i don't think is there yet and still i don't think that this can replace developer jobs at least not in the near future so i wouldn't be worrying about that and one of the things that i would also ask you right now is to comment what is your level of experience so far for example you can say one year two years three years five years plus and also just beside that also type on a scale of one to ten how scared you are of devin how do you think it's very likely that this is going to replace your jobs? And we will see the pattern when you see in the comments later on when you're watching this video, you will see all the comments reflecting that the lesser experience that you have, the more scared you might find people because they don't really know what goes into all this brainstorming, this uh, sort of problem solving, this context analysis, this back and forth communication with the whole team, you know, finding all the possibilities, improving. Uh, as we go forward, there are so many things that come into software development and I don't think the AI is there. It could be there, but I don't think it's going to replace any of the jobs anytime soon. So I hope this analysis sort of provides you a good understanding of what you should expect from Devin. First of all, I really hate the name. They could probably come up with something better. 
But yeah, this is what it is. Just focus on your skills. Just create a lot of GitHub projects, valuable projects, not just to do applications or not just straight up tutorials. Just make that your own. Follow the tutorial and in the end, when you're done, update the whole freaking UI, update the font, update the theme, add a bunch of features, then start talking about it on LinkedIn, on Twitter, that I made this thing because that's going to be something that not all the recruiters have already seen from hundreds of other developers. So that's going to be my tip for you. And that I'm saying this because I know a lot of juniors are actually scared of Devin or similar things going on, but you should not be. Okay. Just work on your skills. And if you're good enough, I don't think people are going to replace you or even AI would replace you. And you can learn when AI gets better. You can learn techniques to sort of take advantage of it rather than being scared of it. And that's pretty much it. Sorry for the long rant and as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next video.